Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about water stewardship for ABP. ABP is a large red meat processing uh, company or a group of companies, uh, 26 in total, located both in Ireland, the UK, and on the continent. And essentially, from a sustainability point of view, ABP has developed a sustainability program where it identified key resources that it wanted to conserve and to decouple resource usage to productivity. And this is something that we've set out over the last five or six years. Uh, obviously, as you can see there, electricity, 20% carbon footprint, 20%, 10% water reduction. We have a zero waste to landfill target for 2020. And uh, we need also to look at animal byproduct recovery. And within that, we have viewed water as being very significant. And of course, there's a global agenda. We hear about population increases, the significant food requirements for future populations, and therefore we have to take care of our resources and get the maximum return from that. And we hear agriculture takes up some of the, uh, up to 70% of the water on, on the con on, in, in the world uh, agenda, and therefore conservation of water is most important. And we talk about water stress, and stewardship is just not about water usage, it's also about abstracting or locating a source of water. It's also talking about wastewater treatment uh, and its ultimate disposal. And in this graph, it shows, obviously, Ireland with a very favorable water stress index. And I can personally uh, say that it rains there all the time. And that's one of the main reasons. But we will also see in, in the UK there with an 8% water stress. And for us, uh, as a company operating in the UK, we need to be cognizant of the fact that water stress can happen and does happen in the UK. And we go from abundance to scarcity, depending on the climatic conditions. And it's key to the whole sustainability agenda across Europe. Because we get extreme climatic conditions. We get drought, we get flooding, and that impacts on our quality of the water that one receives at their factories. Uh, it impacts on groundwater and obviously impacts on surface water. So as a company, we see increasing demand for water across all utilities. And it's important from our point of view that we identify the risks, the stresses associated with that water, and build that into a sustainable business for ABP. And we hear certain statistics about the food industry and about the meat industry in terms of the, the water requirements. And we see when we're involved in protein production in, from animals, there's a significant water increase uh, usage to produce a calorie. And for us, it's, it's vital that we look across the entire supply chain, from the farm to our processing plants, our abattoirs, our deboning, our centrally packed meats, our coal stores, and go as far as the retailer and the consumer as well, to, to understand fully what stresses and strains they're going to put on the water cycle. So water stewardship is very important to ABP. It has many supply chain implications. And most people start off, first of all, with a measurement and monitoring program. It involves training and awareness, setting of targets and objectives. It involves verification of those results. And obviously, this technology advances there today to improve uh, water stewardship and reuse. And I suppose from my point of view today, I want to lay out the program that ABP has used. We often see this sort of system being implemented in companies, and I think we need to look at a more holistic approach to water from source to find final destination. And that's why the stewardship is important. So ABP is a 20-point program. It's delivered across 26, 30 ABP food sites at this point in time. Obviously, in order to develop the programme, we need to communicate it uh, effectively. We need a coordinated response from our employees and from senior management. And it obviously involves a capital investment budget and significant capital investment. So ABP has developed this roadmap. And essentially, it talks about informing, giving information to each site as to how to reduce water and how to become stewards of water. And, and the very basic thing, first of all, it involves getting site maps, 
getting water, water distribution maps, identifying your metering, um, and, uh, so that the information is ready, readily available to hand and that anyone that goes to look at that information can understand precisely where the water has been used within the process. It involves d delivering a water balance, looking at water usage, looking at the losses, looking at wastewater treatment, but overall a complete understanding of where water is used within process and sites. For us, it's about developing a program using a cost-benefit analysis. So we need to know what our cost of our raw, raw water is. If we abstract it, what treatment do we need to undertake it to soften it, to chlorinate it, to make it suitable uh, for use uh, with, with food products. We need to know what the cost to generate hot water is at different temperatures, obviously the cold water. We also need to look at other al alternatives, looking at recycling the water and the costs associated with that recycling technique. And we have to look at rainfall harvesting as well. So it's important when one looks at projects to reduce water that they have these key metrics to hand so they can do a very effective cost benefit analysis and demonstrate whether a certain technique or technology is suitable for the site. It talks about identifying hotspots. So once, once, uh, once personnel on a site understands where water is used, they can identify where the major users are, put in more effective measurement and monitoring, and establish KPIs specific to those production areas. And this is very much targeted key performance indicators for specific parts of the process which consume large quantities of water be it washing of animal byproducts or even washing the facilities. So we need to understand exactly where our water is used and in what quantities and try to develop some form of benchmark uh, so that operatives and management understand uh, the basic units of operation. And it involves some form of dashboard. All too often we get spreadsheets of data which are meaningless with time, because people find it difficult to interpret. So we need some form, a very simple dashboard to say, yes, you're hitting your target, or no, you're not, and then under, undertake a corrective action if, if not. And obviously, with the collection of information, it's important that you share that with your stakeholders. And in this case, for, 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 for us in our facilities, it's not just the employees, it's the technical staff, because it obviously has implications for food safety. It's the engineering staff, because it has implications in terms of how they deliver the water or how they operate the process. It's in terms of general operatives, in terms of what they need to do their job as effectively as possible. So you need to communicate the results, the findings, and develop a roadmap with them as to how to reduce uh, water further. It's about developing a model for the entire site. So getting small pieces of detailed information, joining it together, understanding the overall site implications uh, is most important. And then identify what initiatives that each and every one can make to reduce water. Look at recycling opportunities. Uh, and this whole process is an iterative process. So it's something that is repeatable and is ongoing uh, f from day one. So what initiatives? Very simple initiatives. Initiatives such as we want to re reduce the amount of wastage. We want to get better housekeeping. We want to optimize our washing operations. And there's a perception out there that if we wash with water, the place is going to be cleaner. That's not necessarily the case. We need to undertake process changes. And in fact, ABP has undertaken many process changes where they have looked at their process operations and modified it with a view to reducing the water. We have looked at nozzle selection where water is used in pressurized systems. We've used automatic sensors. And of course, there is a capital investment program. And that capital investment program does pay uh, dividends in the long term. And there, there is a return on our investment. The use of variable speed drives, pressure regulation, or other techniques used in the water areas to reduce water usage. When we go to, to look at water recycling and reuse, we have to ask ourselves a number of questions. What implications have, is there if we recycle water 
what level of contaminants are there, what effects will it have if it ever got in contact with food, uh, and how do we eliminate those risks, and what areas can we specifically use recycled water in that does not potentially have a risk to, our, to the consumer of, of a meat product. <coughs> so, when we look at water reuse, we have two main sources within ABP. We have rainfall harvesting, where we collect rainfall from our large and extensive roof areas, and we've also treated wastewater. And treated wastewater is now becoming more and more important to ABP, because obviously rainfall harvesting is very much dependent on climate, and when you want the water, you don't have it unless you have huge storage areas. So we are now looking at using treated wastewater more back into our processes to reduce the burden on the resource. And we use technology such as ultrafiltration, reverse osmosis, and disinfection on a daily basis on a lot of our sites at this stage to recycle the water. And we have a target that we want to recycle 10% of our production water on a daily basis or on a yearly basis. And we, we use water in areas that are not obviously contact with, with food at this point in time. We use them in our yards to keep them clean, in our vehicles delivering the animals, in our layers where our animals are stored, if you want, prior to slaughter, and in certain process areas that are not uh, edible areas. And therefore, uh, we have huge opportunities in, in the future to recycle more water and use them in these areas and obviously reduce our impact and our burden on, on the resource. Measurement is one thing. Setting targets is another. At the end of the day, we have found that external verification of the reduction methods and the methodology and the numbers are important. And to that effect, we've used the Carbon Trust uh, very effectively uh, in demonstrating and auditing our sites. And it, with respect to water, we have a 7.1% reduction in water for the year 11-12, and we've saved a colossal 133,000 cubic metres of water over those two years. Huge numbers. And it doesn't even stop there. Uh, 13 and 14 are going to show similar reductions yet again, and there's significant opportunities for ABP to do that. We've used the Carbon Trust, one, to audit our numbers and to verify it, but also as a means to communicate our successes to our retail stakeholders in the business. We've, we're also part of an Origin Green program in Ireland, which is a sustainability program for the Irish food industry. Uh, that one is already done. Okay, so when we talk about rainfall harvesting, we look at collection, the storage, the treatment and reuse, and as I said to you before, unless you have huge and significant storage capabilities, rainfall harvesting isn't really something for ABP. Treated wastewater is the way we go. We generate a lot of treated wastewater on an hourly basis. Uh, so we have conventional wastewater treatment plants. We use MBR technology to finally polish off the wastewater, and then we go to the other technologies, as I said before, UF, RO, and disinfection prior to reuse. That is all. Thank you very much. <laughs>